Imagine um avião voando e o rastro de seus motores é apenas água, nada mais do que água. Tudo bem. A grande tendência do mundo agora é controlar a emissão de poluentes. E a aviação, claro, está na vanguarda desse movimento. Mesmo porque, se não estivesse, a própria sociedade vai deixar de voar e aí acaba tudo. Aqui no Brasil não é diferente. No último dia 2 de dezembro, a Gol Linhas Aéreas inaugurou o primeiro voo entre São Paulo e Bonito, no Mato Grosso do Sul, sem escalas e com o primeiro voo com neutralização de carbono. Essa é uma proposta um pouco diferente do que a gente vai falar hoje, porque ainda é usado combustível fóssil, mas se paga uma espécie de pedágio para reflorestar o ambiente. Funciona mais ou menos assim. A compensação do impacto ambiental gerada pelo voo é feita por meio do MCO2, que é um token global lastreado em blockchain. Esse negócio de criptomoeda aí. A MOSS, que é a empresa que lançou o criptoativo, neutraliza as emissões de CO2 financiando projetos ambientais com certificação internacional de conservação da floresta amazônica. Mas existem alternativas mais sustentáveis mesmo, como a gente viu no episódio 774. Aviões movidos por óleo de cozinha, óleo usado, queimado. Assiste lá, assiste aqui, ó, muito legal. Agora imagine um avião que tivesse zero emissões, que só saísse água dos seus motores a turbina. Para a gente entender o conceito de avião movido a hidrogênio, nós simplesmente conversamos com o vice-presidente do projeto Zero Emissions da Airbus, o Glenn Lee Wallen. E posso falar? Como é que eu ia conseguir falar com o cara se eu não tivesse os meus treininhos na língua inglesa com o Cambly, hein? Me digam, pois você também pode conversar até com o Papai Noel, que não sei se você sabe, mas ele não é brasileiro, né? Ou qualquer um dos milhares de tutores do Cambly, porque chegou a hora do presente de Natal do Cambly. Quem nunca experimentou pode usar o meu código para ganhar uma aula experimental e o Listening Challenge, que é um pacote cotão de aulas e exercícios totalmente grátis para você praticar o seu inglês e testar o seu listening. São vários níveis de desafio com pontuação e é ótimo para praticar. É só se cadastrar e você vai receber tudo por e-mail, mas corre que é só neste mês. Use o cupom Aviões Natal e invista em você. I have Glenn here. He's a vice president of Zero Emissions for Airbus. Nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, having me talking to you. Likewise. I really liked your panel there with technology. And I have a few questions about the, the use of hydrogen. One of them is, is hydrogen is very flammable. So is the industry already ready to uh, play with hydrogen in large scale? Yeah, perhaps, perhaps the first thing to say is that kerosene jet fuel that we use today is also flammable. Mm -hmm. and we have quite a lot of design precautions inside the aircraft, inside the fuel system, the tanks, the gating system, uh, which needs to be done very carefully in order to perfectly safely manage mm -hmm. uh, jet fuel. And I think we have a really good track record of, of doing that. Uh, we also have very precise operating procedures around the aircraft uh, associated with refueling and fuel handling. Mm -hmm. and, and um, again, with a really good track record. Hydrogen uh, is going to have to meet the same targets, the same safety requirements as what we successfully achieve with jet fuel and, and uh, kerosene. Mm -hmm. um, what will be different though, is that we will have different technologies that achieve those targets. Uh, we will also have perhaps different operating procedures in terms of how we refuel the aircraft. We're doing a lot of work to try and make sure that they're as similar as, as possible to what airlines are used to today, um, as easy as possible with similar refuel times, for example, as what exists with current aircraft. Um, but, but for sure, the technology solutions and the, the operating procedures will have to be adjusted to handle hydrogen very safely like we do with kerosene. Um, 
we have uh, a lot of expertise on how to make things safe, on how to have redundant systems, double systems and so on, detection systems, and that kind of expertise is coming in very useful as we develop hydrogen solutions for zero E aircraft. Uh, okay. The, the best uh, form of hydrogen is liquid because it has uh, low volume and a high energy, right? But uh, I don't think we can use it right away in liquid form in aviation. It's going to be a phase, like first phase is going to be gas and then we go to liquid or we never no, be there? No, we're going to go straight to liquid. Um, straight to liquid? Yeah, similar, similar to what some people in the trucking industry are doing, similar to what's done a lot already today in the transportation of hydrogen. It's actually transported quite a lot in, in liquid form. Um, similar to what we do in the space sector, where it's always liquid hydrogen. Um, so we're, we're really only interested in liquid, liquid. hydrogen. Wow. And you know, some, some people don't know this, but there, there are examples in the automotive industry uh, in the 2010s of actually liquid hydrogen being used in cars, I of, didn't know of that. refueling stations actually being available. Uh, to the general public for liquid hydrogen. So for sure we have challenges, we have to scale this to commercial aviation applications, but it's, it's not impossible. There, there are already great examples in other industries that we're benefiting from to build zero E. So we need cryogenic uh, freezing of, to, to reach those temperatures. Yeah, so the, the, the plan at the moment is that we would uh, cool it down to the really low temperatures uh, in the truck or in the in the storage facility and then it would get loaded onto the aircraft in this cold state uh, and then the tank inside the aircraft is so well insulated that in fact it stays in its cryogenic form for days and you don't need active cooling on board the aircraft. Very cool. Another question, this is a tough one, it's uh, how much energy is spent to create hydrogen because it's not in the pure state in the uh, planet right it must be created by yeah. man yeah e exactly so hydrogen the hydrogen that we're most interested in is green hydrogen uh, green hydrogen means that it is uh, created from renewable electricity so solar wind uh, hydroelectric uh, that electricity goes into an electrolyzer and the electrolyzer is what's used to create hydrogen. Um, that's, that's the hydrogen type that we're really focused on, that's what we're working with the ecosystem to be able to deliver to airports. Um, and, and really what's most important to us is, is uh, the climate uh, credentials, the climate impact credentials, you know, the environmental impact. What we want to do is reduce aviation's climate impact to zero. What we want to do is essentially power aviation with renewable energy. Um, so that is what's most important to us. For sure you need some energy to, to create mm -hmm. uh, hydrogen, but, but once you're using renewable energy, uh, so long as it's, uh, it's coming from renewable sources and you're not having impact on the climate, um, it's, it's certainly achieving the objective in terms of zero emissions. The other thing is the uh, contrails. Uh, when it burns in the, uh, the engine, it creates contrails. And I read that it creates a lot of more contrails than uh, kerosene. And is that true? And if so, is that a technology to yeah. solve that problem? So at the moment, what's a little bit unfortunate is that you can kind of read anything about um, hydrogen and contrails and in, in some documentation it says it's great in some documentation it says it's not great and what we're interested in doing is taking hydrogen into flight uh, scientifically measuring what happens at the rear of the aircraft and um, using those results to influence our next decisions and, and not just uh, creating an Airbus view, we want to create a scientific community view so that it's not just Airbus saying this is the right direction to go, we think science is what should uh, uh, help us decide the right way to go on, on such a critical topic. Um, what we see from the science so far is that because um, uh, hydrogen is a very clean combustion. There are no soot particles which come out the engine 
and it means that ice doesn't accrete onto those soot particles because they don't exist uh -huh. and therefore you don't get um, uh, persistent contrails which is really what is causing a climate impact. All right. Thank you very much, Glenn. Uh, Pleasure. Really, you are working in a... I mean, you are changing the world. That, that's, that's the true and uh, we need that. That's, Thank you. That's what we're trying to do, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Até que eu fiz umas perguntas bem cabeludas para o cara, né? Mas eu gostei das respostas dele. E realmente ele está mudando o mundo. Deixa aí nos comentários quando você acha que essa tecnologia vai chegar e se você tinha ideia de que um dia iriam fazer um avião movido a hidrogênio. Deixa o like se curtiu, se inscreva no canal se não for inscrito, considere apoiar por apenas R$ 2,99 e o seu nome aparece aqui junto com esses amigos que apoiam. Um grande abraço e... Até o próximo voo com emissões zero.